Hi guys, Mike here. I'm here with my, uh, well, it's not mine anymore, <laughs> but this is a guitar amp or instrument amp, bass amp. It's just an amp that I made several years ago and I made it for myself, never really intended to sell it, but I got an offer from a customer a few days ago and I decided to let it go. So I realized it's certainly quite a beast and I wanted to make a video explaining how to use this thing and uh, its different functions and you know all that stuff so it's an instructional video for my customer Jason but I thought hey not too hard to just uh, make this a video that I can share on YouTube there's probably gonna be somebody who's interested in something like this so uh, just thought I'd share it and it's uh, I guess you know just a one-off it's m one of my creations I made it just uh, to serve me here at the studio, give me a lot of flexibility with a lot of tone and also fairly low noise. So uh, it's a single-ended amp, and if you know anything about tube amps, you got your push-pull or your single-ended. And push-pull tends to cancel out hum and it cancels out even-order harmonic distortion. Single-ended tends to let all the tone flow, but it also lets all the hum through too if there's any. So I went through great extents to make this amp as low noise as possible. The bottom portion is an external power supply that powers the amplifier above. Now, there are five tubes in the bottom and two tubes up on top. The ones on the bottom are all power supply related, and they, three of them are relay tubes. They're thermal relay tubes that control a sequential power up, so you can think of it as an automatic standby switch with uh, some bonus features. And then it's uh, dual rectified with some five AR4 rectifier tubes. Now there's a one power switch. You turn on this power switch that we'll do right here. Main power light turns on and so does this blue light which indicates, the blue light tells you that you're getting filament voltage up to the preamp tube. If this blue light's not on, it's probably because the external supply for that is unplugged. And that is just a 12 volt DC adapter that's in the back. I'll show you that in a minute after we get past the front panel. So uh, anyway, as this thing starts to warm up, these rectifier tubes get warm, but the B plus is off. Once they get up to temp, the B-plus turns on and slowly charges up these filter caps. And then after they get charged up, the B-plus is then clicked on to go up to here. So it's a very slow process that allows everything to gently warm up and get up to full power. When the B-plus is sent up here, this light will turn on to indicate that we have B-plus voltage up here. And then this light will turn on when we have reached full power. The whole process takes about a minute and uh, it's just uh, something that I did for fun, but also because I thought this is probably going to allow all of the components to have their maximum lifespan since uh, nothing's really getting hit with high voltage at any given moment. It's a gradual warming up process. So yeah, there it is. Now uh, up on the top, there is an instrument input, which accepts a guitar or bass, depending on how you have the switch set. It's essentially just a, a voicing control and you know, you, you'll notice when it's on the guitar setting that it's a little bit punchier if you have a guitar plugged in. Or on the bass setting, that'd probably be better for bass or keys, any kind of wide frequency range instrument. There is a gain control right here, uh, which is the distortion, so to speak. So the higher this is, the more distortion you get. The lower it is, the cleaner the sound will be. There is a three position toggle right here, which is a high frequency selector. And then you have your high frequency knob or treble. Uh, you can either boost or cut. The center is virtually neutral. So uh, those frequency choices, I don't know exactly what frequency they are. I never measured it. It's just use your ears, you know. Uh, so on this one right here, it's the mid band. You have four different choices to select for the mids. And then you can either boost or cut with this knob of the mids. And then for the bass section, two different frequencies, A or B. Uh, you can either boost or cut right there, and then a master output volume control. Uh, that basically covers the, the, f the front panel. Uh, there are some switches on top, which you may not be able to see in this video, so I'm going to have to zoom in to show you those ones. But uh, basically, off to the left-hand side, there's a switch that's labeled guitar or hi-fi. Um, on the guitar setting, that's really intended for when you're using this as a guitar amp. Uh, on the hi-fi setting. I put that in there because I was actually using this to run my plate reverb for a while, and I wanted to be able to get um, a greater level of sonic fidelity out of it, so that's all that's really doing. Um, at one point, I was using this to gig with a band, and we got to a venue, 
and I was picking up a radio station, so I realized I need to do a mod to this thing. I put a little switch up here, which is labeled radio interference bucker, and you can either have that on or bypass it. And if it's bypassed, I think the amp sounds a lot better. But when you, if you're in an area where you're subject to radio interference, then you may need to use this. And you'll notice that the amp is just a little bit duller in tone. It's not a massive difference, but yeah, it's there to help if you need it. There is a bias adjustment pot here with a couple bias probes in case you wanted to use a different tube other than the power tube that's in here now, which is a KT88. Uh, the amplifier puts out about 35 watts. Uh, that's the limitations of the output transformer. Let's go around to the back panel, and I'll show you what we're up against there. All right, here we are on the back panel. I think I should have brought my cat's laser pointer, uh, but I'll do the best I can to, sh to show you things. I think this flashlight, it may or may not work. We'll see. Over on the left-hand side on the top are the speaker outputs. There's 16, 8, and 4 ohms. It is not advisable to use multiples at the same time. Just pick one and that's what you're using. Make sure you match it to the speaker cab that you're hooked up to. You got an 8 ohm speaker cab, use the 8 ohm jack with a speaker cable, uh, not an instrument cable. Now right here is the reamping input. Now it looks like at one point I had a ground lift switch here and removed it. I guess I just figured it wasn't necessary anymore. Next to that is another switch now this switch is pretty cool. This is the pentode triode switch. Now when the switch is up, it's basically operating like normal. The amp's using this big ass tube uh, in a, to its full potential. It's a pentode, so it's using the whole vacuum tube. And the amp is operating in ultra linear mode, which has to do with the windings of the transformer, canceling out some harmonic distortion. So it's technically cleaner sounding when you have it in pentode mode. It's also louder. Uh, when you switch it to the triode, the ultra linear is essentially defeated and you're not using all of the elements within the vacuum tube. You are just using it as a triode. So the output power will go down. The harmonic distortion will increase. So it's certainly a more colorful option. And that really just comes down to what it is that you're trying to do. Right here are all the power connections. Don't go messing with this. I have everything sort of zip tied in place. Uh, these cables are tensioned and placed in very specific orientations to cancel out hum. If you were to relocate them, the hum of the amplifier would increase uh, quite a bit. I found the ideal locations and did the best I could to make them not <laughs> move. Now this one right here is the uh, filament supply for the 12AX7. That's a DC supply which is Velcroed down in the bottom here. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. I'll try to get a close up. That's just a switch mode 12 volt adapter specifically for that filament voltage for the 12AX7. The reason why I did that was to cancel noise. Filament noise is one of the biggest sources of noise in a tube amp. Each tube, you know, each tube or set of tubes has its own power supply for the filaments. Power tube up there has its own 6.3 volt supply. The rectifiers have their own separate transformers. There's separate transformers for everything. That's what these are. So this is the 6.3 volt transformer for this one. This is the 5 volt transformer for the rectifier tubes. And then the main power uh, transformer is right there, which has the high voltage and has some lower voltages for the little relay tubes. Uh, there is a fuse on the back for, uh, let's see, what does it say? That's for the B plus and the 6 volt heater. So that's the fuse for this transformer. There is a front panel fuse too. I'm sure that's labeled. I don't remember off the top of my head what it is. Now, if you did have to take all these cables out, everything's labeled, so you should be able to get it all back together. Uh, there is one power cable here, and that's it. I'm gonna do a little audio sample here. I actually have a pre-recorded part in the computer. I'm gonna run it out through XLR cable out of my converter right into the back of this where the built-in reamping box is. And then we can tweak these knobs and see what this amp is all about. I have it set up right now sort of for a guitar, and that's what the first sample is. And uh, this interference bucker is bypassed. We're in pentode mode on the back panel. And I'll have it set pretty clean right now to start off with. This is from a recording session recently, uh, so it's you know pre-recorded material that I just pulled up real quick. And uh, it's a guitar that was recorded direct, so it's basically the same as just plugging into the front, except it's pre-recorded. So.
right, so partway through this next little run, I'm going to switch it back over to uh, triode mode on the back panel. That's hot. It's pentode. Let's uh, try out some other stuff. Hi-fi mode, bass. It's a synthesizer for you. That's a soft synth. Well, I hope you had fun. I did. Anyway, uh, it's been nice playing with you, old girl. See you around. This is the Gravitone Nucleus, by the way. And uh, I called this uh, Power Supply the Electron Reactor. It's a fun little project.